Thank you. So this uh, contribution is uh, derived from my PhD thesis that I defended two months ago in Sapienza, the University of Rome. And the, the thesis was focused on how we can uh, develop new tools for emotional design by means of uh, cognitive uh, neurosciences. So um, the research investigated uh, how the designer uh, could interpret the neurophysiological responses of the user experience from the design perspective. Uh, most of the research was on the identification of the possible areas of connection between design and cognitive neurosciences. But part of the research was focused in a still man marginal way and that still need uh, further development to provide designers with some practical tools. Therefore, <coughs> method cards have been identified as a tool which makes neurophysiological data interpretation readily and accessible for design. Uh, User-centered design requires designers to be focused on users since early stages. Designers' interest in enhancing user, and emo user uh, emotional and cognitive response can also nowadays make use of tools and methods of cognitive neurosciences. Designers are therefore required to have specific knowledge on how to interpret this specific data. As widely accepted, emotion can be considered as the expression of three indicators, which constitute the triad of emotional response. Model expression, physiological excitement and subjective feelings. On the basis of which of the three indicators you observe, different instruments and methods are adopted with specific advantages. Uh, by observing the neurophysiological indicators, we have the following advantages. The first one is to overcome the semantic and cultural limitations that other tools pose, such as the verbal tools of self-reward. The second advantage is to record the user's response simultaneously with the product experience. The third one is, the, uh, is to collect information on the emotional states of which the user is not aware and which therefore could not be described in a self-report. Cognitive neurosciences are providing an increasing, an increasing body of knowledge. However, this information is dense and not only not easily accessible or usable for designers. Therefore, it was necessary to provide the designer with a tool to interpret the neurophysiological response. Uh, among the most relevant neurophysiological indexes, scientific research has accepted the triad of mental effort, emotional index and interest. With the triad of cognition, emotion and behavior, we can depict the quality of the user-product interaction in a holistic approach. Uh, as for the mental effort, um, cognitive effort can be measured by means of EEG frequency band um, between 4 and 7 Hz, called theta waves. A user who wants to achieve a task by means of product needs to understand how to use it to get to desired goal. Therefore, the mental effort, the more the user, the, the more the mental effort the user shows, the less the product is easy to be used. It would make sense that simple, easier to process designs might be favored. Psychologists call this processing fluency. As for the emotional index, <coughs> uh, the emotional response can be represented by means of few fundamental dimensions, among which the most commonly accepted are Balance and the arousal for the emotional index and approach and withdrawal for the interest. The valence arousal variations can depict the emotional states of the users towards stimulus. These variations are expressed in the emotional index and unlike the mental effort, the emotional index doesn't take into account brain processing, but it relates to peripheral parameters. The cognitive, cognitive function that is relevant in the emotional index 
is the decision making that before the somatic market defined by Damasio was totally unbalanced on the rational meaning. Uh, when the individual reacts to, to the external environment, so when an individual um, relates with a, pro with a design product, uh, he tends to optimize time and results. Therefore, the somatic marker brings past experiences in the process of decision making. Uh, the somatic markers, marker helps to understand how the cognitive and their affective response work together rather than subsequentially. To measure the valence, the valence and the arousal, two neurophysiological variables have been used in scientific literature the galvanic skin response and the heart rate. Uh, since the emotional index expresses the valence and the arousal depicting the emotions the user feel, feels during the interaction with the product, the better the emotional index, the better the user product interaction. Uh, as for the interest, it describes a reaction that, unlike the other two indices, does not depend directly on a specific cognitive function, but on the particularity of the stimulus in relation to the organism. The object of the analysis is the behavior of the body in approaching or withdrawing by a specific stimulus, rather than a given, a given cognitive function. Approach or withdrawal behavior depends on an appraisal process. Since the emotions have an instrumental role, they are responsive to perceived changes and they have a situational meaning that is specific to the context. Context. This process is non-conscious sense evaluation of the external stimuli with short duration but does not evaluate the stimuli as such. It gives a personal significance of the event for the individual well-being. Uh, the approach withdrawal can be measured by means of the frequency band comprised between 8 and 12 Hz named uh, alpha waves. From a, designer, from a designer perspective, the higher the interest, the better the user product interaction. By, particip by participating in an interdisciplinary um, research group composed of uh, researchers in the field of neuroscience, psychology, biomedical, engineering and communication experts, we identified a certain integration of the research of cognitive neuroscience with the research of emotional design. As shown in the picture, neurophysiological data can be measured simultaneously with the exposure of the subject to the stimulus, rather than being detected a posteriori, avoiding therefore the time gap and its disadvantages, affecting the quality of the measurement. Moreover, the portability of, the to of these tools allows to detect the user's involvement with the stimulus in its original context, thus being able to return the image of a context of use adhering to the real. We then investigated whether it is possible to use the tools and methods of cognitive neuroscience, such as the galvanic skin response, the heart rate, the EEG, headset to support the designer's activity. By combining the results in the fields of emotional design, we depicted the uh, matrix shown in the picture to interpret neurophysiological data, but from the design perspective. The matrix represents a possible bridge between design and neuroscience by providing with a, reason, with a reasonable degree of approximation guidelines to interpret neurophysiological data. As the, latest, as the latest research about neurodesign found, what can be depicted are trends rather than precise results. Therefore, from a purely theoretical analysis of the design research literature and from an observation on the field of tools and methods of cognitive neuroscience, we associated the interpretation of the mental effort to the reflective level defined by Norman and to the instrumental interaction defined by Desmet and Hacker. We have instead associated the interpretation of the emotional index with the visceral level defined by Norman and with the known instrumental interaction defined by Desmet and Hacker. Finally, 
we associate a dead interpretation of the interest index with the design level named behavioral according to Norman's research and on non-physical interaction as defined by Desmet and Hacker. The designer who tests a product is in a focus group and wants to know its product experience can potentially use the tools adopted by cognitive neuroscientists and measure the experience by means of three of these three indices. To support their interpretation, we have developed a card-based design tool to support designers in taking into account cognitive and emotional response from the cognitive neuroscientists perspective. Uh, by, conducting, by conducting interviews with professional designers and researchers, the group largely agreed on the following possible uses of cards. The first one is interpreting the neurophysiological data elicited by a given design product. Second one is the is, um, designing a brand new design, a brand new uh, design product with the goal to leverage on a specific neurophy neurophysiological index. The third one is um, the possibility to alter a design product and by redesigning it, leveraging on emotional aspect not considered before in the original design. The cards consist of three groups, one group for each of the three neurophysiological indexes. They are recognizable by their color code Blue identifies the functional sphere linked to the mental effort. Red, the morphological sphere linked to the emotional index. Uh, green, the semantic sphere linked to the interest. The front part of the, of the card contains an, identi an identifying letter of the sphere to which it belongs. It is followed by a heading that explains the sphere of belonging and a subheader that describes describes the principle according to which to interpret the data. On the back, there is a short sentence in, a bold, in bold which explains the nature of the interpretive principle. This is followed by the questions that the designer can ask to interpret the data. Simulating the use of the cards, for example, the designer who sees the product eliciting particularly inconvenient values of emotional index We'll have to use red cards and ask the questions proposed. The purpose of these questions is to guide the designers in reasoning that can lead them to identify aspects of the product that potentially elicited that specific neurophysiological data in that specific phase. There is no hierarchy in sequence usage. Designers can ask all the questions proposed in the cards starting from the one they prefer. The cards are subdivided according to the principle to which they answer and therefore represent macro groups of questions. The designers can then first identify which of the cards is the most relevant and then go into the into specific. The tool of cognitive neuroscience must be complemented sometimes, especially for the interest value, with the already known uh, tools such as the semi-structural interview, interviews. Um, in conclusion, the cards help to think about to think which aspect of the product may be susceptible uh, to improvement, but the choice of where to operate and how to do it remains at the designer experience. This is the first beta version and the cards will be evaluated through a design in use study. Um, in the next developments, three professional designers will use the cards to interpret three different through uh, three the different stimuli or product design design product, in which we expect one of the three neurophysiological indexes will predominate. Furthermore, cards could be also used as a teaching tool in uh, design courses. Thank you.